All right, guys, 2006 Dodge Ram 3500 48RE. And as you can see, um, this is all busted up here. Uh, I believe what's going on with this uh, on the, this is a 4x4, of course. This is a 4x4 extension housing. On the drive shaft, there is, there is, was a, a huge damper, like on the yoke, on the back of the yoke that would slide into uh, the transfer case. And that damper was, uh, the rubber was torn up and the thing was just slinging around, wasn't really doing much. And I think that kind of threw everything off balance. And I believe at that point what happened was the vibration was probably so bad it just totally cracked this tail all, all around. Um, I don't have the piece with me because I had to send it out to the drive shaft people to look at because I, I, you know, I called him and he said just leave it off. I'd really rather not do that. It came through that particular way so I'm ordering new parts and they're going to assemble everything and we're going to get the drive shaft back. And also this at one point had water in it so that's another reason why we're going to be doing this trains. I mean the fluid's nice and clean but this guy constantly changed the fluid but obviously the main reason why we got this in is because this cracked and all the fluid ran out. So we, uh, the guy had a tow it over here actually was uh, probably, if he wanted to bring it here, was probably about four or five hours away. It was about a five or six hundred dollar tow. But uh, we got it here, we got it out. We're going to be opening this thing up uh, and doing a regular overhaul. I got a tail coming. And we're going to fix it up nice for him. A couple of things uh, on this. Uh, here is your linkage here. And your kick down is here. And I honestly have never seen this before. But this is an electronic kick down. This goes right onto where normally the linkage piece would. And it bolts to the case. And there's a wire that goes in here. So this honestly is the first time I'm seeing this. Electronic kick down. And I already, I didn't want to break anything, so this is the uh, neutral switch. So I wanted to take that off. This goes right into the side here and, and bolts up. So I didn't want to break this, so I took this off as well. And of course, with the tail breaking up and it vibrating, this is what's left of the output speed sensor. So we're going to be changing that. And here's all the aluminum pieces uh, from the tail. The tail hanging off almost uh, when we got it here. Uh, so we're going to be taking the overdrive section out. We're going to break the unit down. So let me get a little closer with the camera and uh, we'll start taking this thing apart. And I'm going to be using to take it apart with my new DeWalt uh, 20 volt 3 8 gun I just got yesterday. So we'll see how that works. All right, so let me get a little closer and we'll start taking this apart. All right, so before we continue with the teardown video, I uh, just want to talk about these extension housings. Here is my new one that I got. This is brand new aftermarket. This was over $300 that I had to get. And the one thing about this 2006 van, which I did not know before, is this is a diesel. Okay, and pretty much 2003 and up uh, application with this uh, with these rams, the diesel uh, has a very heavy transfer case on the back. It could be uh, 70 to 80 pounds, and it's not supported that great. And from not being supported that great, uh, this can also happen, uh, this breaking up here. So I think it's a, a, a matter of it not being supported correctly, and also that counterweight, which is right there, right by the uh, extension housing. I mean, the yoke goes into the output shaft of the transfer case, uh, transfer case, and then you have that counterweight, which is attached right there, and then you have the U-joint. So it's all right there, and being the fact that this counterweight was broken, and it was kind of just flapping around in there, and it being not supported that great in the first place, I think that's how this had happened. So here is my new housing that I'm going to be using. It's brand new. And another thing we're going to be doing to support this, bet, to support this better is we have this uh, 
kit, the support kit that uh, I believe Adapter Case makes. Uh, to support the transfer case a little better. So I believe what happens here is this, we got new bolts and I'm going to take two bolts out of the transfer case and these two bolts are going to go into the transfer case. I'm going to take these two bolts out and this is going to go here and then we got to probably drill through uh, maybe the cross member or maybe uh, something's got to be drilled through. Uh, I'm thinking it's a cross member um, to put this uh, bolt in to support this thing a lot better So we're going to be doing that when we go back together with this uh, When we reinstall this train, so I just wanted to To share this stuff with you Because um, I honestly did not know it was a diesel and the diesels are known um, You know kind of for this to happen But I honestly thought it was a gas engine, but when I started Looking at it, I realized it was a diesel. So, anytime you get a diesel application all three and up, I would recommend putting that extra support kit in. I believe it's a hundred bucks, uh, especially if it comes through with a busted tail. All right, one more thing I wanted to show you on this pump, which I forgot to show you, is I have this pump together already, but this particular one here, I don't know if you can really see it, but it takes a ring. Uh, for the converter right here and these pumps usually do not but this one does so that's something else that you want to watch out for because uh, I totally forgot about it and I'm so used to not seeing it that as I was putting it together I said oh I forgot to tell them about the ring so I wanted to show you that as well all right so that's it with this for now so we're going to continue proceed with the teardown video of the 48 RE All right, so we're gonna start taking this one apart. Okay, here's your overdrive piston. Here is a washer, a selective washer uh, that sits in this piston. We'll actually probably talk about that later. Okay, here is your linkage arm. So what we're gonna do now is gonna pull these pump bolts out. We're gonna flip it, take the pan and the valve body off. This guy uh, probably changed the fluid in this thing. I mean, the fluid's actually clean. Pan's got a little crap in it, but it's not bad. Uh, he did change the fluid probably about 10 times, he said. But uh, the fact is, this did have the radiator went and this did have water in it. All right, this is on uh, these later ones, actually, is a reusable gasket. So we'll get rid of this there for now. All right, we got a filter. That is a T25. Next is we're going to do the valve body. So if 
far I'm liking this gun. Actually, when I uh, when I, I got this uh, yesterday and I was watching some reviews on uh, YouTube and some of the reviews they have the they, they show them taking uh, with the 3 8 gun 20 volt taking lug nuts off so when I got it I tried it and I was able to take the lug nuts off off a car we were working on I think this has probably uh, up to about 150 pounds of torque that's what the, I believe the specs are alrighty so let's see if we can lift this Get stuck in the linkage piece here. Okay. All right, so here is your valve body. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a couple things on this once this unit's apart. So for now, just going to put it aside. All right, now we've got to release this band, and that actually is going to be a three-quarter. I have to get that socket. Actually, I'm seeing piece, uh, I'm seeing bits of uh, of antifreeze here as uh, taking this transit part. All right, so now I'm going to push this thing out. I'm going to get this uh, in between the uh, direct drum and the shell, and it should it should pop it right out. First, I gotta release the band. Okay, that's good. And right here is your pump. Two drums. Intermediate band. We have a couple of washers here that go in between. Uh, the intermediate shaft and the forward drum. All right, now we have a snap ring. Let me just turn my light back on. Okay, Let's see what the snap ring at. is uh, front planet ring gear. You got a washer in here. Okay, this planet goes in here like this. And I got like a bushing here. You know, keep some oil in place. So we'll put that aside. We don't want to break that. Shell, washer here, washer here, and the washer on the back side of the shell goes goes on the planet there, like that. Here we got another washer for the front side of the planet here. the intermediate shaft. I want to make sure this is all good up here. Make sure it's good where the snap ring sits in the groove. Yeah, this thing definitely had water in it because the, uh, you just tell by the way the gasket is. 
All right, so now we got to get the uh, reed drum out. It's got a snap ring. And for that, I got to have to use a different pair of pliers. Okay. Got a snap ring, hold the rear drum in. Alright, and we have a two tape washer, fiber washer for that. So this is the um, like the 618 big big unit. Got a really pretty hefty band here. And again, I'm, uh, this did have water in it at one point, so all this stuff is going to be changed. It's the reverse band. All right, now we're going to pull the sprig out, the low sprig. Hopefully it won't fall apart on me. All right, here's your low sprig. And the inner race for that is right here on the drum. Right here is an accumulator. Okay, that goes like that. Got an O-ring here. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this thing up. I'm gonna take this aluminum support out. So what let's see if we can pop this thing up. Might be uh, held in there because of the uh, gasket. So let's try this here. Water being in it, I guess, it's holding this thing. In. Here's the aluminum support. You want to make sure all this looks good here, looks good inside. You know, this is where the drum would ride. This is where the drum rides in here, so you want to make sure this isn't scraped up. And it has a screened orifice right there. And you want to make sure that looks good. You know, it didn't fall out or anything like that. Normally it's pretty good. Okay, so now there is a let's get the rod out for the band that holds the band in place. Two uh, side servos out. All right. The first we got to get the uh, let's get that actuator out.
see if we can just possibly push this thing out. It's on a couple of O-rings, but the O-rings may be swelled up and it'll make this thing come out so easy. So let me get, get this here. going here and it works like that and this here is your adjustment for the reverse band for now I'm just gonna leave it alone once the brand new band goes in there uh, we will see what kind of adjustment we need if any all right let's see if we can get the snap ring out he's got some heavy springs behind it This is the reverse. And here is your piston. See all the, all the crap on that from the water being in there. Okay, so this is going to go like this. This is how the setup looks when it's in there. So this lever here, the actuator for the second speed band, the intermediate band, is going to stay in there. We'll just flip it up. And let's try to get that one out. spring in here. Okay. Again, with all the water and crap, here is that spring and the piston. This is the piston here. And this setup in the case looks just like that. I don't want to hold it over and drip all over the floor. Okay, so this uh, case is completely empty now. All right, we got a lever seal for the linkage right here. We're just gonna pop that out. All right, so this case is, uh, is good, it's empty. Uh, all right, so let me just, uh, again, I want to get rid of the case, I want to get rid of the oil, and we're going to start uh, going through the drums, opening the pump, we'll talk about the valve body, and actually, you know what, I have to take apart the overdrive section. So let's get rid of the case. I want to take those out. Uh, behind this little plate there is a snap ring um, that will allow, once I get uh, the large overdrive frictions out, there's a couple of snap rings behind this that allow the entire setup to slide out. And here is a bearing that just fell out, which goes here. Sometimes these 
Sometimes these are very hard to come out. These uh, T25 little screws here. But what I normally do before I uh, attempt to unscrew them or, or get them out, that's what they look like, these little things. What I normally do is just uh, kind of shock it, you know, hold the hammer and give it a shot on each one. It normally loosens up, and uh, I don't have much of an issue uh, getting them out. Okay, so here's the little plate, little gasket, and then there's the snap ring. It's exposed, you know, you just got to spread it and it's in a bearing. All right, so I'm going to take this little wire clip out that holds the uh, large overdrive clutches in. And we'll slide these out. Overdrive frictions here, and a little clip that uh, holds them in place so they pretty much don't fall out when you turn the thing over. Okay, now we have two snap rings to come out. Right, this first one that comes out, which is actually the second snap ring, of course, is going to be a wavy snap ring. Okay, that's a wavy like a cushion. And then the actual snap ring that's going to come out, or spacer, uh, is flat. Alright, so on reassembly, see this is flat. On reassembly, you put this one in, and then you put this one. So this one is going to sit against the pressure plate. So the flat one goes in first, and then the wavy one goes in. And then the clutches stack up. Okay, so now the next thing we got to do is turn this thing up and let's see if we can spread that clip and get this overdrive section out. tail and inside the tail is the parking pole uh, assembly. Alright, now what I got to do is just going to pause the camera for a minute. I got to go into my press and there's uh, probably within this hub there's probably about maybe a 700 pound spring and I have to release it to get the snap ring out to get the overdrive direct frictions out. And I'll take this apart, you know, one piece at a time. So let me just release this clip uh, to get the snap ring out. And I will be back in a minute. All right, so I pressed this down, pressed this heavy spring down. Uh, the clutches went down enough for me to get the snap ring out. This is the overdrive direct snap ring. Um, it is a wavy snap ring and this snap ring actually loves to break so uh, every overhaul as a standard procedure I put in I put a new one in all right so we're going to take this uh, up out first with the clutches all right we can slide these right off these are your overdrive direct frictions 
Okay, again, they're all going to be changed due to water contamination. Okay, this is the hub with the big, big, heavy spring in it. Okay, there is a water, uh, berry. That goes here. I'm going to take out a planet. Okay, that's going to go just like that. The next thing we'll take out is the spray. Or they would call this the overrunning clutch. Okay, here's the, here's the piece that rides on. Let me just grab it very gently. Okay. The overrunning clutch in the overdrive section. Okay, that's what that looks like. Then you have another berry. That's going to go right on here. And the rest is just the, the housing. There's actually a couple of bushings down in here. You want to make sure they're good. Make sure your bearing is good. And uh, one thing, if you have, uh, seems like you have um, an end play problem, a lot of times where this bearing sits down in the pocket, uh, it wears down and it'll make up uh, an end play issue. So that's one thing to check if you have, um, if you have an issue like that with, uh, with end play. All right, so this is the overdrive section. All right, so now let's move this aside. I'm just gonna back out a little bit and we'll open up the drums. Okay. here in between the two drums. This is your forward and your direct drum or your re reverse drum. Right, forward clutches first. Okay, again everything looks okay but due to the fact that water was in here, they're going to be changed. Okay, now I'm going to take this wavy snap ring out that holds the uh, Return spring, there's a, a plastic spacer. Let's see if we can get that out. And take this drum apart. Okay, so here's the wavy snap ring. Okay, here is a plastic spacer. Put that aside, don't want to break that. Here's the return spring. Okay, that will come apart. And here is your piston. Right here. Okay, this snap ring also is wavy for the clutches. Alrighty, there we go. One, two, three, five of them. It's a pretty heavy duty uh, trans. And you got to get that snap ring out, get the return springs out and the piston. Okay, this bushing, there's a bushing in here that I like to change on, on the overhauls. It tends to wear out, so that's going to be changed. All right, so let's open up this pump. All right, we're going to remove the two rings so we can get the washer out of that one. Okay, here's that washer, much thicker than the one that goes in between the two drums. You don't want to make the mistake and put this one in between the two drums. Because then you'll have a clutch noise, a clutch will be running around the hub. Alright, so we're going to take this uh, pump apart. 
Let me get a chrome socket for that because it's a little tight. Okay, so they have a shaft. Looks in real nice shape. Here is your pump gears. And again, I like to know which way they come out. And these come out. There's a, a little dot here, a little dot here. Actually, they're on both sides. So for this one, we'll just look at the witness mark on the inside where the converter rides to know which way these gears go. But actually, these are both the same, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I just kind of like to put it back the way it comes out. So I'll be checking the uh, witness mark made by the neck of the converter. Okay, here is your pocket. This is your vent here. Pocket feels good. And when you fill these, when you fill these uh, 46, 48 REs and you check the fluid, you got to do it in neutral. All right, if you fill these things in park, um, I don't believe the fluid circulates. I believe it exhausts right back into the pan. And if you fill these in park and the oil goes in too fast, actually starts coming out of the vent. So these gotta be filled in neutral and they gotta be checked in neutral. Um, if the transmission is truly full, right, and you check it in, in park, it's gonna look like it's probably a couple of quarts over full. So you gotta remember, it should actually say on the, on the dipstick to check in neutral, but all the um, uh, 42, 44, 46, 48 REs, you check in the neutral range, not in part. Okay, so that was the pump, that was the drums. Now let's get the valve body here. Ugh. All right, uh, a couple things on this valve body. All right, first, I, there's uh, screws that hold this plate down. I just took the uh, screws out. I'm gonna take the plate off. But inside here is the 3-4 accumulator, spring and piston, and this spring likes to break. So this is something that you wanna look at all the time. And let's get the piston out. Okay, so this spring actually is good, but most of the time, it's broken. Okay, now as far as your, um, electronics on the valve body. Uh, you have your governor pressure solenoid, you have your governor pressure sensor or transducer, and then you have your overdrive and lockup solenoid on the bar and harness here. Okay, now this uh, governor pressure sensor uh, also has a thermistor incorporated in it to read trans temp temperature. All right, and that would help with the operation of fourth clutch, you know, that's usually why it's there. These sensors go bad all the time. Uh, if you get anything erratic shifting, starting out in second, maybe shifting a third, shifting a fourth, maybe not shifting out of first, there's a series of codes uh, that these two sensors, if they're faulty, will produce, like governor pressure sensor offset drift, um, something to that effect. Uh, pretty much what you gotta do is put your, you gotta put a scan tool on it, go into live data, and you gotta drive the car. Uh, at at uh, zero miles per hour, you should have zero pressure, and it also works like a TPS. Like for instance, a, a, a TPS at an idle is going to have a half a volt, and at full throttle, it might have four and a half volts. That works similar. So you want to have zero pressure and maybe 0.6 on the volts. And as you go faster with road speed, the pressure should kind of equal road speed, 18 miles an hour, 18, 20 pounds of pressure. But the bottom line is that zero miles an hour, you should have zero pressure. If you have 10, 15, 20 pounds of pressure, it may start out in second, may start out in third, and that could be what the problem is. But it's very common for these two to go bad. Uh, okay, now just on the other side of this, 
do have a little boost plate here and there's a little tiny hole drilled in it and they like that hole drilled out I think the spec is 69 thousandths that would help prevent like uh, 1740 code lockup code stuff like that I actually have a valve body quick tip on this plate which I did not put out there yet uh, alright so that's um, probably about it on this 48 RE oh you know what I did want to tell you one more thing all right, on this, this selective washer, um, if you ever have to change this, you gotta be careful not to put one that's too thick, because if you put one that's too thick, and when you put this together, you put the housing on and bolt it up, and you, and it would go like this, and you push this whole setup, you know, it would comp uh, 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 compact the spring, and you push it forward and you release the overdrive direct clutch only because I've seen it done once the shim was way too thick and uh, uh, when the people called me they couldn't figure out why they lost reverse when I started questioning them it ended up being that the shim was too thick and he and, and the over, direct overdrive clutch actually got released and they lost reverse so you want to be careful that it's a selective shim if you're adjusting end play stuff like that all right so again uh, I thank you guys for watching um, I'm going to get going on this because we got to get this one done. Uh, I'm going to be changing also the pump pushing as a standard procedure. The pump pushing has been changed. I like to change the state of bushing, also help prevent lockup codes. Uh, all the clutches, bands, electronics because this was submerged in the water. And uh, I guess that's about it. So I thank you guys for watching once again and have a great day.